Hello, I'm Deirdre Hayde, and I am a mystic rooted in the tradition of the ancient Kabbalah, healing the wounded heart of our world. Why 2019 is our choice point. So first I would like to dedicate this moment with us together for all of us to set our intention to heal the wounded heart of our world, to send our light, our compassion, our focus into the great heart of the unified field of humanity and the unified field of nature, the animals, the minerals, the birds. We face today a, a great breaking open of this heart of creation we call planet Earth and our experience on planet Earth as her guests, her custodians. We ask, how can we repair? How can we change what has happened, what is occurring? Much of what is occurring cannot be changed. It is beyond the point where we can reverse what is happening. But that doesn't mean that we cannot heal the wounds. We can. And I truly believe that together, we will. So how do we do that? I want to look at that in this um, presentation about how we individually can do this. It's very important, of course, that we take action, that we are activists. I'd like to say that we are love activists, so that in our activism, we bring the field of love, the field of unity, and the very important Kabbalistic uh, understanding of, from the mystical Torah of rebuke. It says in the, the Kabbalah that rebuke is as powerful a, a spiritual act as forgiveness. And we place a premium on forgiveness, and forgiveness is the, the cornerstone of Christianity of which I always also grew up as a, a Christian, and also Buddhism, which I've studied extensively. When I discovered that the other side of forgiveness was rebuke, I was really intrigued. What is that? You know, I always thought that rebuke is a kind of a scolding, and, and that's never any fun uh, to be on either end of that. But what I found out when I began to go deep uh, into the mystical texts and study with uh, my various mentors is there's a kind of holy rebuke and there is a way to rebuke. And what rebuke is, that is the love of saying an action was out of integrity, an action was out of virtue, and I have a duty to speak up and call you on this whoever you it is. Even myself, I have a duty to say, Deirdre, what were you thinking? What were you doing? You were out of the line. Now go take care of that. So that's really what rebuke is. So we, uh, as activists, we uh, are the voice of rebuke in saying um, no to things that are harming our planet and our world and each other. And we must stand up, we must stand up, we must speak out in order to bring our world back into harmony and to heal the, the great heart of creation. So this holy rebuke is completely tied together like this with forgiveness. They go hand in hand because it is also said that one cannot forgive until there has been remorse or until there has been a repair of the misalignment to virtue and value and justice. 
once that happens, then the steps of forgiveness can come into play. And a union, a reuniting of opposing factions can come to one. We see this when, when two countries uh, finally have a peace agreement and then actually cohabitate. And when we, we all feel exalted when that happens. Uh, we haven't seen that right now, but um, for those of you who've lived long enough, at least in my life, I've seen this happen a few times where there is this great sense that all is well because a, a wall went down. So we, um, we brought a wall down uh, between uh, Europe and uh, the, the um, Berlin and Russia. We brought a wall down. Um, and now, of course, we're trying to bring a wall up, but I feel that we can not have the wall go up so it doesn't even need to come down. And when we see with that kind of vision, that's being a metaphor, the wall, we are operating in another very spiritual path uh, from the mystical teachings called tikkun, and that means to repair. So we each have a tikkun, a life purpose to repair something. You usually know what your tikkun is because it's a pattern that will show up in your life over and over, whether it's in a relationship or in work, or it's just a pattern. And after a while you go, you know, I keep doing it. This keeps happening to me. Then you know, I have something to repair. It doesn't mean, oh, I'm bad. It means, oh, I have something to repair. And when this repair is a really big something. We call that tikkun olam, and tikkun olam is one's life purpose to repair. And part of repair is holy rebuke. And when repair occurs, then forgiveness, which means to let go. The Hebrew word for forgiveness actually translated means to let go of then we can let go of. So there are steps to healing. There are mystical, spiritual steps that are very practical. These are practical steps. They're not steps that are off in a transcendent state. They're steps that we take right here, right now with each other. So healing the wounded heart of our world that's a pretty, pretty big uh, desire, isn't it? A pretty big dream. But it's a dream that we can each do individually. Because we are in a unified field that the one are many and many are one. Whatever you heal in yourself, whatever repair occurs in your life, in your relationships, in with the people directly around you, in your community, that is a union, a reunion between the light and the dark, what's good and what's not good, this tear, the, the split of duality in our world. When you heal and repair any place in yourself where you say you're intolerant or you're judgmental or you're prejudiced or any of the things that make us human, we all have them, I have them too. Whenever we repair that, whenever we, we, we heal this, the split in time and space that causes duality, that causes us to experience being separate from each other is healed. So when our wound is healed, the perception of reality shifts. Perception of reality comes from the brain. 
The brain is what creates our perception and science has proven this. From the mystic, what our brain imagines and dreams we create. So in our healing, we are the projector. You are creating into this field of perception, a seed, a possibility for global healing. I don't know if you've noticed this, but over history, there's been a fire here and then we put it out, yay. Oh, a fire over there, we go there, oh no. We put it out, yay. A war here, oh great, there's peace. Oh no, but now there's a war over there. It's like the split or the the confusion, the chaos, that which causes evil, it just jumps around. It just changes location. So it, it's not really coming to an end. It is just shifting where it's expressing itself. Because everything is energy, every feeling, every thought, every intention, every action created. We are, uh, what's the word we are? Regurgitating energy. We're just taking energy and we're putting it here or we're putting it there. The real key, the real key right now is that we take the energy and we don't just move it over there. We actually clean house, we actually clean it up, wash it up, scrub it, give it a bath, maybe a bubble bath, something. And we just, ah, then now the energy is in order and harmony. So what happens mystically? What is that sacred alchemy that when we have a, a negativity, a heartbreak, a loss of betrayal, you know, how do we take that and turn that into a positive energy? And what happens to the negative energy? Because energy doesn't go anywhere, right? There is a way to take negative energy and to transform it into energy of balance. Now notice I didn't say positive energy because this is the world of opposites. I said a energy of balance because negative energy is really a balancer. And in this world, in order to have peace, in order to heal, we must balance these polarities, very much the way in acupuncture and in the, the healing modalities of Ayurveda, it's about balancing the doshas. It's about balancing the system. We need to do the same thing with our thoughts and our feelings. Think about that. Many of us do yoga, Tai Chi, have practices to balance our energy in what we eat and how we live. It's time, if we want to heal this wounded heart in our world, it is time to now balance our thoughts and our feelings, our emotions. Balance our mental ability with virtue, with value, with core value. To become a whole balanced individual when we do this, that tikkun, that repair happens. Working with energy really is a mystery. And that's why we turn to the mystics because you can't really say, oh, this is how you do it because it's energetic. You can't, you can say step one, step two, step three. For those of you who've seen my uh, six simple keys to living a spiritually fulfilled and purposeful life. You learned about the silent watcher, about core value, about how to have a practical spiritual practice so that you can enter into the mystical. And that really is one of the great practices and reasons why to have a spiritual practice. 
is because to really do this kind of deep sacred work, it's beyond the words. It happens in an energetic state within our being. A few pointers to help you along the way so you know, oh wow, I, I shifted an energy, go like this. Let's say there's a person that you have been really angry with and you just can't get past that anger, you can't get past that resentment and you know how hard that is on your heart and on you and you're just in a conundrum. How do I release myself? How do I forgive? How do I let go of the experience that I had? The day that you let go, you will know that you have done that mystical work because you won't have an attachment. You won't have a charge with that person. It'll just be gone. Like it evaporated. Where did it go? It'll just be gone. That's real healing. Or let's say you've had a problem your whole life of having self-esteem or you, you beat yourself up a lot. I can identify with that. I spent a lifetime beating myself up. Why are you so different? You're such a weirdo. <laughs> and uh, it was painful. It was so painful for me because, uh, you know, when I was a teenager, I was always the oddball. I was always seeing purple lights flying through the air and talking to angels. And um, so uh, it wasn't what everybody else was doing. And then even as an adult, um, I never quite <clears throat> fit in. I was always in kind of another, another cog. So I adopted this, um, this really uh, detrimental voice, the ego voice, the yet hurrah of you know, oh, I'm, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I'm, I'm not worth anything, which is so not true. And then when I had my awakening and I felt this field of love, that what happened is all that love I felt with everything, the most amazing thing that happened is, is that the love came back to me. And all of a sudden I was loving myself. I, I didn't know what that felt like to love myself. It was a new experience. And I went, oh my gosh, this is the most important. This is the most important love. How, how is it that I miss loving myself for a lifetime? And then I looked back and I saw the carnage of what that not loving myself had created. And I made a vow. I made a vow that I would now love myself no matter what. And in loving myself with all my shortcomings, it sure made it easier to love others because we all have shortcomings. That shift in consciousness, that shift in perspective changed the course of my whole life. My whole life. I went from penniless, single mother, not knowing what to do, to an abundant life of financial abundance, abundance of love. Uh, my children, a healing, a healing in the family. And just one dream after another just started to happen. I mean, it, it just happened. Because I had this love for myself. And I realized that I was able then, when I did that, that negativity, I was in this, this sacred space where the negativity just became the positivity. And I don't know how it happened. I can honestly tell you, I, I don't know how it happened. That's the mystery. That's the mystery. And that's why connecting with the mystery is what really ultimately is going to heal the wounded heart of our world. We are on a precipice now. We are at a choice point 
where what we choose this year, 2019, it's going to determine the gift of 2020, what that gift looks like. So there's a few things, there's a few things I want you to join me in doing because it really will work. The first thing is, is to say, I love myself. And you can do that. Just take your hands and just give yourself like a big hug and feel your hands about 10 inches from your heart. And send love from your hands into your heart. We just, just do it all together right now. And now ask yourself, say, please divine me, divine self, please love me. Please divine me, divine self, love me. And now imagine your heart softening and now say, I, I promise to receive your love, me to me, eye to eye. I promise to open and receive this great love from me to me. And now place your hands on your heart. Take a deep breath. You can kind of rock yourself a little. Rocking is really, really good for energy. It anchors the energy. A deep breath and we exhale. Oh, okay. I am love. I am loved and I am love. Now I promise you do this in the morning and in the night for 30 days. For 30 days you do this. Your life will completely transform. Healings that you couldn't believe could happen will happen. Your perception, the, the great, oh, I want to say projector of our brain, is going to start projecting a new image. And you're going to see it. And you're going to experience it. And if enough of us can do this, we can heal the wounded heart of our world and we can lay the foundation of receiving the gift of 2020 which is on its way for i have been told by the great archangels and the ascended masters that they are coming and that they are here many of you have already begun to see them. Pilots are seeing lights flying through the sky. Photographers are taking pictures of strange creations of light in snow particles. People are taking pictures of flashing lights in the desert. You may be one of the ones that feel a, a warm wind or smell roses or orange blossoms some afternoon and wonder where did that come from? Well, I'm telling you from those divine beings because they are coming. They are coming to help us, to assist us. But just as I talked about how my life really was in a very sorrowful state for a many, many, many years because I didn't even know how to love myself. I didn't even know it was okay to love myself. I was like, oh no, you're supposed to love other people. But I never got, oh right, that includes me, I'm a people. And then the day that I went into this great unified field of love, the oneness of all that is, and this love came whoosh, pushing back into me. And I went, oh, oh my, I have, to I have to love myself, not just God, not just a present, I have to love myself. That's when my life changed. 
So in order for the gift, these magnificent beings, our brothers and sisters, our ancestors of light, in order for them to bring the miracles they're here to bring, we must receive them because they are such great love. And until you can receive love from yourself, you cannot receive love from anything else or anyone else. Think about that. Until you can receive love from yourself to yourself, no matter how much love is in your world, you won't fully receive it. You won't know how. Because the first love, the first relationship to thine own self be true. I am that I am. I art thou and thou art I. This is, these are all mantras for I love myself, therefore I am. I love myself so much I chose to come to earth and play and be of service. I love myself so much that I am whole and complete and therefore I have so much abundance of love to give. I'm not empty. I love myself so much that I am free no matter what anyone says or what is happening in the outside world that can never take away my freedom because I know myself and I know myself because I love myself. So thank you. Thank you for being with me today. And may we all greet the world with oh, a big hug around ourselves. <laughs> thank you.